We continue on today with Chapter 5, Teaching and Healing. What fear has hidden still is part of you. Joining the Atonement is the way out of fear. The Holy Spirit will help you reinterpret everything that you perceive as fearful and teach you that only what is loving is true. Truth is beyond your ability to destroy, but entirely within your ability to accept. It belongs to you because, as an extension of God, you created it with Him. It is yours because it is part of you just as you are part of God because He created you. Nothing that is good can be lost because it comes from the Holy Spirit, the voice for creation. Nothing that is not good was ever created and therefore cannot be protected. The Atonement is the guarantee of the safety of the Kingdom and the union of the Sonship is its protection. The ego cannot prevail against the kingdom because the sonship is united. In the presence of those who hear the Holy Spirit's call to be as one, the ego fades away and is undone. What the ego makes it keeps to itself, and so it is without strength. Its existence is unshared. It does not die, it was merely never born. Physical birth is not a beginning. It is a continuing. Everything that continues has already been born. It will increase as you are willing to return the unhealed part of your mind to the higher part, returning it undivided to creation. I have come to give you the foundation so your own thoughts can make you really free. You have carried the burden of unshared ideas that are too weak to increase, but having made them, you did not realize how to undo them. You cannot cancel out your past errors alone. They will not disappear from your mind without the Atonement, a remedy not of your own making. The Atonement must be understood as a pure act of sharing. That is what I meant when I said it is possible even in this world to listen to one voice. If you are part of God and the Sonship is one, you cannot be limited to the self the ego sees. Every loving thought held in any part of the Sonship belongs to every part. It is shared because it is loving. Sharing is God's way of creating and also yours. The ego can keep you in exile from the kingdom, but in the kingdom itself it has no power. Ideas of the spirit do not leave the mind that thinks them, nor can they conflict with each other. However, ideas of the ego can conflict because they occur at different levels and also include opposite thoughts at the same level. It is impossible to share opposing thoughts. You can share only the thoughts that are of God and that He keeps for you. And of such is the Kingdom of Heaven. The rest remains with you until the Holy Spirit has reinterpreted them in the light of the Kingdom, making them, too, worthy of being shared. When they have been sufficiently purified, he lets you give them away. The decision to share them is their purification. I heard one voice because I understood that I could not atone for myself alone. Listening to one voice implies the decision to share it in order to hear it yourself. The mind that was in me is still irresistibly drawn to every mind created by God because God's wholeness is the wholeness of His Son. You cannot be hurt and do not want to show your brother anything except your wholeness. Show him that he cannot hurt you and hold nothing against him or you hold it against yourself. This is the meaning of, quote, turning the other cheek. Teaching is done 
in many ways, above all, by example. Teaching should be healing because it is the sharing of ideas and the recognition that to share ideas is to strengthen them. I cannot forget my need to teach what I have learned, which arose in me because I learned it. I call upon you to teach what you have learned, because by doing so, you can depend on it. Make it dependable in my name, because my name is the name of God's Son. What I learned, I give you freely, and the mind that was in me rejoices as you choose to hear it. The Holy Spirit atones in all of us by undoing, and thus lifts the burden you have placed in your mind. By following Him, you are led back to God, where you belong. And how can you find the way except by taking your brother with you? My part in the atonement is not complete until you join it and give it away. As you teach, so shall you learn. I will never leave you or forsake you, because to forsake you would be to forsake myself and God who created me. You forsake yourself and God if you forsake any of your brothers. You must learn to see them as they are and understand they belong to God as you do. How could you treat your brother better than by rendering unto God the things that are God's? The atonement gives you the power of a healed mind, but the power to create is of God. Therefore those who have been forgiven must devote themselves first to healing, because, having received the idea of healing, they must give it to hold it. The full power of creation cannot be expressed as long as any of God's ideas is withheld from the kingdom. The joint will of the Sonship is the only Creator that can create like the Father, because only the complete can think completely, and the thinking of God lacks nothing. Everything you think that is not through the Holy Spirit is lacking. How can you who are so holy suffer? All your past except its beauty is gone and nothing is left but a blessing. I have saved all your kindnesses and every loving thought you ever had. I have purified them of the errors that hid their light and kept them for you in their own perfect radiance. They are beyond destruction and beyond guilt. They come from the Holy Spirit within you, and we know what God creates is eternal. You can indeed depart in peace, because I have loved you as I loved myself. You go with my blessing, and for my blessing. Hold it, and share it, that it may always be ours. I place the peace of God in your heart and in your hands, to hold and share. The heart is pure to hold it, and the hands are strong to give it. We cannot lose. My judgment is as strong as the wisdom of God, in whose heart and hands we have our being. His quiet children are his blessed sons. The thoughts of God are with you. And from the workbook, Lesson 33. There is another way of looking at the world. Today's idea is an attempt to recognize that you can shift your perception of the world in both its outer and inner aspects. A full five minutes should be devoted to the morning and evening applications. In these practice periods, the idea should be repeated as often as you find comfortable, though unhurried applications are essential. 
Alternate between surveying your outer and inner perceptions, but without an abrupt sense of shifting. Merely glance casually around the world you perceive as outside yourself, then close your eyes and survey your inner thoughts with equal casualness. Try to remain equally uninvolved in both, and to maintain this detachment as you repeat the idea throughout the day. The shorter exercise periods should be as frequent as possible. Specific applications of today's idea should also be made immediately when any situation arises which tempts you to become disturbed. For these applications say, there is another way of looking at this. Remember to apply today's idea the instant you are aware of distress. It may be necessary to take a minute or so to sit quietly and repeat the idea to yourself several times. Closing your eyes will probably help in this form of application. There is another way of looking at the world. So today we are reminded of the Holy Spirit through our reading. We are calling for the Holy Spirit's way of looking at the world. We are calling upon a detachment from the thoughts that we think we think and the world that we think we see. We are open to the Holy Spirit to show us that only what is loving is true. That we cannot destroy truth, we can only accept it. We are grateful for the spiritual and metaphysical fact that nothing that is not good was ever created. That all truth, love, spirit remains forever as God created it. We call upon the Holy Spirit to remember that we can only share the thoughts that God has given us. That ego ideas are unreal and cannot increase, cannot be shared. And with the Holy Spirit's help, all past thoughts are canceled out. All past errors fade and disappear in the light of the Atonement. Today we hear one voice that shows us a world free of error, free of judgment and pain. Today the Holy Spirit's world sparkles before us as we rest in stillness. We cannot share opposing thoughts. Only the thoughts that we think with God can be shared. And when our thoughts are pure thoughts, 
arise in strength. We share them. And their sharing is our purification. So today we see the world in a completely different way than the past. We are free in the light of truth. With deep sincerity, we hold up the idea for the today in our mind. There is another way of looking at the world. <laughs>